Hi, my name is Sianda and welcome to 2017. We all made it. <laughs> okay, be serious. Hi, my name is Sianda and welcome to 2017. Many people have it in their New Year's resolution to read more books. This video is about just that. In these six simple steps, I will not only help you make more time to read, but also try to help you improve and cultivate your relationship with books in general. So that reading isn't just something in your to-do list, but a big part of a rich and textured life. So I hope that you stick around for the whole video, and then I hope that it's enjoyable. <laughs> People often say that they don't have time to read, but I disagree. I think we have more free time than we realize. This July, I read something like six books in the space of two weeks. I posted this to Twitter not to brag, but to ask for recommendations for new books. But what the main response I got was how? How did I read so much in such a short space of time? Thinking back on those two weeks, I realized that they were kind of special. All of that reading coincided with the death of my smartphone. I had all my free time back. It was now clear to me that I had never been too busy for reading, but that I was just using my free time differently. Since then, I've had to retrain my brain. Now that I have a new smartphone, it has been challenging to try to keep up my new habits for reading books, but I realize that my life is much more textured, more interesting, and much more fulfilling with books back in it. But one special book that got me really thinking about my brain's relationship with reading is Nicholas Carr's The Shallows. In it, the author explores research on how the internet affects our brains and how excessive time online can affect not only our attention spans, but also how we are able to form conclusions on data that we've read. The way that social media constantly demands that our attention move from one interesting object to another is what makes it hard for us to be able to then turn our attention to books, which in contrast seem very, very boring. Some people have even told me that when they read a book, they find themselves falling asleep. I suspect that this might have to do with how much time we spend online. In conclusion, for my first step, I urge you to study yourself for the space of a week or so and kind of really observe yourself um, in your free time and what you automatically gravitate towards when you have a few moments in the day. And you'll re probably realize that the excuse that you're too busy to read may not always be true. If you want to read more books, I believe that you have to change how you relate to books in general. Many people think of books as entertainment, something to pass the time. You probably get home in the evening and imagine yourself having to choose between reading a book or watching television or YouTube or whatever. What's going to happen in that kind of scenario is books are invariably going to lose. That's just natural. If I had to choose between watching a short YouTube clip and reading something like the autobiography of Malcolm X, I would probably choose watching YouTube. And it's not because I'm lazy or because I'm illiterate. <laughs> it's because I'm a human being. And it is far easier to watch television, to watch YouTube clips, and you know to be on social media than it is to read good fiction but i'm not going to say read easier books or you know watch more challenging tv and film because those do exist i'm also going to say that you know you should challenge yourself to use social media constructively because i think that is also entirely possible instead what i'm going to say is perhaps we should change what we expect from books. Maybe we shouldn't expect a medium that does all the work in entertaining us. A book is not like most TV. It demands that you meet it halfway, that you use your imagination, and that you give serious thought to the ideas that it presents to you. In fact, this is an idea that author J.C. Hallman goes into in his book Be and Me, where he explores his own complicated relationship with reading. But my favorite part is when he implores the reader to consider the idea that the word entertainment meant something very different than it does today. To entertain something actually meant to give it a great deal of thought. And with great literature, that is what it demands of us that we meet it halfway. Does it sound like a lot of work? 
perhaps but again that's because i'm comparing it to you know sitting on a sofa and letting the television glaze over our eyes the thinking and imagination that fiction demands of us is so enriching and so worth it that i cannot imagine a world where reading has been replaced by tv or anything else it just wouldn't be as meaningful to me If you've been having a hard time reading books, it may be because you're associating literature with a landscape that is unfamiliar to you. It is hard to cultivate a relationship with something that seems to depict alien realities almost exclusively. But on a poet, Le Rodila Saranaveng, once told me that he had read ferociously in secondary school and mainly American thrillers. But it was only when he discovered the works of another Madonna writer called Andrew Sassini that he was able to really connect with books and see the novel as a means in which he too could tell the stories of his community. Reading books by people from your community can help you feel a connection with literature as a whole. Now, it may take some time and work to find these books from your, your region or continent or country or whatever because uh, international bestsellers tend to take up a lot of space in bookstores all over the world. So in that case, what you can do um, is write a letter to your bookstore, to your local book chain, or you know, fill out a request for books from authors from your own community, country, or region. There are three ways you can read socially. One, you can start a book club with your friends, neighbors, classmates, colleagues, or you know, whatever. Two, you can start a habit of reading um, out loud to children in your home or in your community. Three, you can challenge yourself to have an online space where you share your thoughts um, on the books that you've read and how they've affected you. A book club is a weekly, monthly, or whenever, uh, or, re or just regular meeting where you get together with people who've read the same book as you and you discuss it. You can all afford to buy a new book regularly. This is a good way to do it. But if you can't afford to buy a new book, you can do what I did in secondary school, which is either my friends and I borrowed as many copies of a book as we could find from a library and read them together by either passing them along to whoever hadn't, you know, who had finished it first. Another thing we did was that if we, if we couldn't find um, the copy of a book in a library that we wanted to read, we would all get our money together and purchase one book and again, pass it around the group and read it as quickly as possible so everybody could get the chance to read it. So that's one thing you can do. Next, if you have children in your home or in your community, you can start reading out loud to them. When I read to children, I'm, a, I'm reminded about how wonderful it is to be able to read in the first place. And it's also good for children to go up in a home where reading is a social activity. When I was young, my mother read Bible stories to my brother and I. And my father told us traditional Sudwana folk tales. What this did for my brother and I was foster in us a real appreciation for stories and the power that they have in our lives. We both got very excited about the prospect of creating our own stories. I went on to try to become a writer and my brother <laughs> wrote comic books that were so funny that he almost got kicked out of secondary school. Anyway, reading out loud to children in your home or just in your community is a really, really great way to get everyone excited about reading. And if you feel silly, just remember that a long time ago, at least I think so, books used to be printed without spaces in between the words because books were meant to be read out loud. Now, social media may sometimes feel like it's competing with books for our attention, but you can actually use that platform as a way to, mot to motivate yourself to read more. If you post that you want to read books, book X by date Y, what you can actually end up doing is motivating yourself to pull through. And then you can share your review of the book um, with everyone in your social network and get people talking about it. And that's a great way to have social accountability. See? Social media isn't all bad. Whether you use a Kindle or a physical Kindle, oh my god. Whether you use a Kindle or a physical book, 
it is important that you take your reading everywhere. Firstly, so that if you are a person who um, feels like you're using your smartphone too much, you can try to retrain your mind to pick up a book instead. And mainly because to me, nothing ignites beautiful words like reading them in confrontation with the hustle and bustle of everyday life. I lived in Khabarune for much of my reading life and read books in combis and taxis and while waiting and walking. The sound of conductors, you know, shouting at passengers and women selling oranges, you know, added a very exciting and exhilarating flavor um, to the stories that I was reading as well as the ideas that I was confronting. Fiction above all else is an experience. It is not just entertainment. It is not just stories. Good fiction at least is about, you know, sharing in a multi-dimensional experience of being human and living in a complex and difficult world. And by taking it everywhere with us, both metaphorically and physically, you know, we grow closer to understanding, further away from myopia, and we grow more intimate with the eternal. I think. Is that a bit much? If you're having a, if you're having a hard time reading novels, pick up a short story collection, pick up a book of poems, pick up an essay collection. If you're having a hard time reading classic novels, you know, novels that you think you should be reading, you know, pick up something new, something contemporary, something experimental, something fresh. If you're having a hard time picking what to read next, Pick one author and read their entire body of work. What I'm trying to say here is read what you want. Maybe you're having a hard time picking that one book, you know, on your bedside, not because, you know, you hate reading, but because you don't want to read that specific book. We get so caught up in what we think we should be reading that we forget to enjoy reading for reading's sake. So figure out what you want. The world is full of a book for every type of person. From romance to horror to sci-fi to, um, to court dramas to epistolary to historic fiction to literary criticism, books about other people reading books, you know, to court dramas to whatever. The world of literature is huge. The world is bigger than the bestsellers list. The world is bigger than Daniel Steele and John Grisham. The world is bigger than Twilight and Fifty Shades of Grey. The world is also bigger than Shakespeare and Chinua Achebe. The world is so large and so complex that I guarantee that if you can watch this video, you can find the book for you. That being said, when I say read different, I also mean don't chase the same high. So what I mean is sometimes people will read a book that they love and then decide that they have to find a book that makes them feel exactly the same way that that book did. Now that's not a bad thing. It's totally understandable and natural. But think about this. What if that book made you feel exactly everything about that experience that you were supposed to feel? Am I making sense? What if you should now not fling yourself into an identical experience, but into a totally different and new world? I always credit going to school with a tiny and random AF library as what caused my eternal love for books and literature. The books in that library were so unbelievably random that it seemed like they were constructed you know, from the winnings of some strange lottery system. But what that did for me was it forced me to read completely different, you know? If I loved a book, and I mean if I really loved a book, when it was over, it was over. I couldn't, I didn't always have access to every single book in that author's Canon. I couldn't always have access to books in that genre even. You know, it forced me that if I loved this book, I had to move on to something totally different. As a result, I read truly, you know, enriching books and I don't think that I would have chosen those books, you know, at age 12. In one week, I would read Alice Walker and the next week, Goosebumps. I read books about Nairobi slums in the same week as I read, you know, a book about American babysitters. I read books so different from each other that every new book felt like I was learning a totally new language. And from that experience, I realized that fiction is a celebration of the complete randomness and uniqueness of the human mind. And so I say, explore it.
And if after all that reading and all that searching, you still can't find the perfect book for you, then it might be time to write it. But that's, that's a video for another day. Thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I hope that you enjoyed and I hope you got what you wanted. If you did like it, please share with your friends and family who might also have a big New Year's resolution to read more books. Comment, like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. And I hope you have a very good 2017. Bye. We are Africa's future, and yes, we are online. We are online. We are online. Wait, okay, just be serious for once in your life.